If you or someone you love is suffering from severe inflammatory bowel disease and are facing surgery or currently have a poorly functioning ileostomy or alternative procedure such as a J pouch or Coke pouch, perhaps it's time to discover this appliance-free option the Barnett Continent Intestinal Reservoir, or BCIR, at the Continent Ostomy Center at Palms of Pasadena Hospital. Freedom, control, and complete confidence. It helped put some self-esteem back in my life. It's given me back the greatest normalcy that I'll ever have. People travel from all over the country to undergo the procedure and recovery process in St. Petersburg, Florida, the only BCIR center in the eastern U.S. The BCIR team conducts informational seminars in cities across the country to help people determine if BCIR is right for them. This video helps bring the information from that seminar series to those who cannot attend a seminar in person. We begin with some of the most commonly asked questions. Inflammatory bowel disease is a broad category. Its characteristic are inflammation and irritation of the entire digestive tract. When you talk about ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, which are the two major categories of inflammatory bowel disease, sometimes they're very hard to distinguish. Ulcerative colitis is usually isolated in the colon and rectum and um, impacts the surface of the colon. Whereas Crohn's disease is the entire digestive tract, so basically from the mouth all the way down. Now when you talk about those two disease processes, you usually try to treat initially with medication, but when somebody is not responding, then you usually will recommend surgery. There's another disease called familiar polyposis and those individuals are also uh, lumped into inflammatory bowel disease when you talk about a broad uh, disease heading. However, it's a little bit different. Those individuals have hundreds to thousands of polyps that resemble mushroom uh, shapes, and it's very, very uh, highly cancerous to the tune that the only treatment for these individuals is colon removal, and colon removal is called proctocolectomy. The other category is other, and those are individuals that perhaps have, some, have sustained some type of trauma, uh, and they perhaps will need their colon removed. There are three major surgical alternatives if you require having your colon out. One is a conventional brook ileostomy, where you have part of your small intestine protruding out from your usually your right lower quadrant area, uh, that will require an outside bag or an appliance. The second is also called an ilioanal or J pouch, where your pouch is made but connected to your anus. With that, you're having bowel movements through your bottom, but having multiple bowel movements a day. And a third option, which we're really here to talk to about predominantly today, is an internal reservoir that is continent. BCIR stands for Barnett Continent Intestinal Reservoir. It is an ostomy, but it is an ostomy that is free of an appliance. It is an internal reservoir made out of your small bowel, um, and it stores your body waste, your fecal material, and the gas. A person would be considered a candidate for a Barnett Continent Intestinal Reservoir predominantly for three major reasons. One is an unsatisfactory ileostomy or having troubles with your ileostomies. Another candidate would be someone who has a failed coke pouch or ileoanal type anastomosis as well. Again, also someone who primarily is losing their colon or needs to lose their colon because of the diseases that we've talked about already, such as ulcerative colitis or familial polyposis. The history of the, the BCIR, Barnett Cunt Intestinal Reservoir, actually goes back originally to Niels Koch 
who came up with the idea of making a continent pouch. The BCIR is a modification of the Coke pouch. Uh, Dr. Niels uh, Koch out of Sweden um, started to offer the Coke pouch back in the 60s. Uh, unfortunately, he had a complication rate of about 40%, so it fell out of favor um, in the United States. There was a surgeon named William O. Barnett who uh, himself was offering the Coke pouch, and he too was experiencing a high failure rate. He was like an engineer and looked at the surgery, the way he was um, creating it and made major modifications. Uh, he was a surgeon that was active in um, Jackson, Mississippi. And with modifications, um, he uh, named the procedure after himself and did a series of 300 before he located to St. Petersburg, Florida. And that is the beginning of our program. The BCIR, or Burnett Cunt Intestinal Reservoir, is created out of your small intestine, which is the only intestine that you have left after removing your colon. And so, as we make a pouch, it is going to use about the last two feet of your small intestine, and we make a, what we call a nipple valve into it, and that's what allows it to be continent. The plus is, is that you don't have to have any outside tissue protruding and we can also place it very low in the right lower quadrant in a cosmetically more appealing area. The BCR stoma is flush. Uh, if you were to take your hand and uh, rub your belly, there's nothing um, protruding as with a traditional ileostomy. It's very small. It resembles a buttonhole to a lady's blouse or a shirt. There's nothing that will come out of it other than some moisture, which we refer to as mucus. So there is no stool or gas leaking out of it. This stoma can be placed near bony prominences, whereas when you compare it with an ileostomy, you need a flat plane to anchor your appliance. It can be placed anywhere on the abdominal wall, and most people will opt for it to be very low, right above the pubic hairline. That enables people to wear whatever clothes they want to without being able to see this stoma. The anatomy of the pouch starts out at the skin surface with the access segment. And again, this is flush to the skin, nothing protruding. It then goes into the valve, which allows it to be continent. Again, the valve is also made out of your own intestine. This is an inside of, of a pouch. When we first make the pouch, it's actually quite small, but over time grows to, that, to a size that you only have to access it or intubate it two to three, maybe four times a day. In addition to the anatomy that we've discussed so far, another significant advancement that Barnett made was adding a living collar to the pouch. So as the collar which wraps around your access segment fills, it actually tightens up. You always say it's like a necktie tightening up around your neck. Uh, so as your pouch fills, collar fills, it gets tighter and helps it stay continent. The capacity of an internal reservoir initially is only about 75 cc's or a couple cups uh, of fluid. And so earlier on, uh, it is quite small, but over time it's going to grow to 11 or 1200 cc's. And this is what allows you the ability to not have to access it or empty it near as often. The process of draining the BCIR is called intubation. It is something that the individual will master before they're discharged from the hospital. It's something that takes minutes to perform once you gain your confidence. It involves lubricating a soft catheter and inserting it into your stoma, pointing it downwards, and by gravity, your fecal material and your gas will come out. There's no pain involved because there's no uh, nerve endings. 
and it is um, performed about two to four times on the average. Most of our patients do not wake up in the middle of the night to empty their BCIR unless perhaps they've eaten extremely late and they're not used to it or they've eaten some Mexican food and it's not part of their dietary regime on a regular basis. There are a lot of options to cover the stoma. It is necessary for most because it will put out some dampness, some moisture. Uh, we have some people that use a very small band-aid that you would use on a child's knee if they scraped it up. Uh, but more times than not, individuals will take a larger band-aid um, and secure uh, it over the stoma. If they don't want any adhesive, they're going to use some toilet tissue. And if they wear a undergarment that's form-fitting, it'll hold the tissue right on top of the stoma. Other options are a, um, some absorbent pad that has um, a strip of tape to it, such as a lady's panty liner. And they will cut that in half, put the adhesive tape to their undergarment, and this absorbent pad will just hover right over the stoma. As far as discomforts, when it's first created, you're gonna have the typical surgical pain. Uh, we do keep you well medicated in the hospital. We like people not to experience peaks and valleys. Uh, that certainly comes with any type of um, surgery. Uh, as you recover, um, that will be less. Um, and when you go home, there is going to be a period where you're going to have increased gas. The logic between that is you have a very small BCIR. We have surgically obstructed you by the valve and collar. Nothing can get out, so you're gonna feel that gas ricocheting. We don't want you suffering though, so we are going to have you intubate frequently and put you on a schedule so your BCIR gradually uh, enlarges. As with any major abdominal surgery, there are always associated risks. The most complex one are fistulas and slip valves. Both require surgical intervention more times than not. A fistula is an abnormal communication the body is smart and what happens with a fistula is the body allows a tunnel to be created and it goes to a weak spot in the body. A weak spot can be a potential old drain site or a midline incision. So with a fistula you will see some abnormal drainage. It could also go to the valve and collar mechanism and so in that situation you're going to have somebody that um, has incontinence. A slip valve is a complication um, that will have symptoms such that the individual has difficulty putting the catheter in. It is a valve collar that is unraveled. Some other risks of the procedure that are certainly less complex um, and can occur with any type of major abdominal surgery are your kinks and your obstructions. Uh, the diameter leading into the BCIR is such that body waste and food can um, travel with peristalsis. With a kink or with an obstruction, you get a backup. Uh, symptoms of an obstruction is going to be abdominal pain, uh, tender abdomen, usually nausea and vomiting. But with a person that has a BCIR, they're not going to get any bowel content out of their uh, BCIR. Uh, usually we'll tell them to go to the local emergency room. It doesn't necessarily mean a trip back to St. Pete uh, because any surgeon that feels comfortable going into your belly should be able to take care of it. Other potential risks or discomforts are um, associated with some scar buildup in the access segment. You have to introduce a catheter into the BCIR. The body does have a normal um, uh, 
a protective uh, mechanism where it develops scar tissue and it can make the lumen narrow. So you'll usually have a patient that will say, every time I insert the catheter, I'm feeling discomfort or I'm noticing some bleeding or I'm having to fight to insert the catheter. It's a very simple day type of operation, um, but that is something that could occur, although it is not common. It's referred to as stoma stenosis and it causes intubation uh, difficulty. You can get a normal GI flu. Um, symptoms are going to be just like anybody else, but with somebody that doesn't have a large bowel, the risk of dehydration is much, much uh, more severe. And so our motto is drink, 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 and drink some more. You also can get pouchitis. We don't really understand pouchitis. Um, if we were to scope a pouch, the inside of the lining is angry, it, friable, it has some ulcerations, just doesn't look healthy. Um, if we were to do a stool, stool culture, there's no organisms, but it does respond to antibiotics. Uh, we will get a phone call from an individual uh, who's back home and they'll say, um, you know, I usually drain my pouch two to three times in a 24 hour period and it's not even 11 a.m. and I've had to go to the bathroom uh, five times because my inside sounds like a washing machine. Um, at that time, we're going to ask them if anybody's sick in the household because you still can get food poisoning, etc. But if it's only them and it's mimicking a flu, we'd rather be proactive than reactive, so we're going to order an antibiotic. We only scope pouches for pouchitis when we have somebody that's refractory to treatment. We actually did a study, it's called our 510 study, and, and this really put down kind of in black and white what the patients can expect. And so we, we do know what your potential problems are gonna be. So again, big numbers, uh, about 80% of patients really require no subsequent surgery, and about 20% will require additional surgery. Out of those, uh, 12 to 16% will require some type of major surgery, and another smaller percentage will require minor surgery. The major surgeries that we talked about earlier are related typically to valve slippage or fistulas. Minor surgeries that may be indicated and usually just a day type surgery, you can get that tightening up of your access, which is what we call stenosis, and this could require an opening of that. So again, big picture, 80% of patients are doing well without any significant complications other than possibly pouchitis and those types of things and about two out of ten may require some additional surgery. The typical time in the operating room can vary from patient to patient but on the average it's about four hours. Uh, the mass majority of our patients will go back to a unit called 2 East or the BCIR unit. The accommodations are a private room uh, where we do allow a significant other to stay during the entire hospitalization. The nursing staff that you will be encountered have all undergone intense training to take care of the BCIR because we learned a long time ago that if you have a nurse that is not familiar with the various tubes, they can undo all the, the benefits that the doctor offered you in the operating suite. Everybody is going to have a calendar that's placed on the wall, and it really is just a, um, a, a plan of care that uh, we follow. So anytime Dr. Rinke walks in your room or his nurses, They'll ask you what day are you on and it's something that you can easily point to. Initially after surgery, you are going to have a central line that's going to be inserted in the operating room. You'll have IV fluids and IV antibiotics and pain medication administered through there. We don't use that tube that everybody is familiar with called a nasogastric tube. Instead, in the operating room, we insert a gastric tube that's in your abdomen. It is very, very comfortable when you compare it to the nasogastric tube, and it is removed right at the bedside once we're confident that your bowels have woken up and that you're gonna be able to tolerate food. We do 
keep you NPO or nothing by mouth after surgery because your bowels fall to sleep when we put you to sleep with anesthesia. We watch the color of your bowel contents and when your bowels start waking up, that's when we start administering clear liquids. We, in the interim, have people well hydrated and well nourished with IV fluids and hyperalimentation, or as some know it, TPN. Once we start the liquids, it's usually a fast, relatively fast progression. We go from clear liquids to full liquids, and ultimately, before you're discharged, you're on a low residue diet. Uh, we tell people to chew, 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 because your food has to break down in order to get through the catheter. We also tell people to drink, drink, drink because our patients don't have a large bowel and they could uh, dehydrate easier than somebody with a normal digestive tract. It is typically an 18 to 21 day hospitalization and I like to uh, describe it in uh, separate three weeks. The first week I prepare everybody to understand that it, this is major surgery and you are going to feel like you're recovering from major surgery. You're going to need pain medicine and we are going to be giving it to you frequently. You may not be happy when the nurse says, I'm getting you out of bed, but it's necessary. You won't be eating, but on the other hand, you're not gonna be hungry. So again, the first week is typical recovery from major abdominal surgery. The second week, you're striking up your independence. We encourage everybody to get dressed. We teach people how to disconnect some of their tubes, and we allow them to roam the halls for 20 minutes every hour. So the patients, although they are happy they're still with us, are striking up some independence. The third week, the typical patient is bored to tears, wants to go home, doesn't understand why they have to stay with us so long, but as I already alluded to, our patients are traveling to us a great distance, and we want to make sure that there's a confidence level when they go home and that they understand how to drain their pouch, they understand signs and symptoms of pouchitis and potential complications. The care that I received at Palm to Pasadena Hospital was excellent. The nurses are fabulous. They listen to you, take time with you, answer questions, they become part of your family, and I value their friendships. After the hospitalization, we uh, ask patients uh, to keep close contact. Um, we would love to assume no news is good news, but we need a sense of security that you're thriving. So our general rule of thumb is that we want you to call once a week for a progress re report for the first six to eight weeks. After that, we ask that you call us as needed. And as you'll usually hear from our alumni, and we don't call them patients anymore because they're out thriving, uh, they'll usually say that when they do call us, our response time is better than their local health care team. The BCIR procedure has been performed at Palms of Pasadena Hospital since 1988. Uh, we've done, as a facility, uh, close to 4,000 procedures. I currently have actually performed over 2,000 BCIR procedures. Um, obviously, some of those are redos, but, uh, and I would say in actuality, the, it takes more experience to do the, the redo operations than it does to do the primary ones. I often get asked why the, your local surgeon and or docs didn't tell you about this procedure. And I would say to you, ask them why they didn't tell you about it. Because in actuality, uh, it is in all of their materials uh, and is available to you. I, I truly say though, my job as a doc should be to tell you what your options are. And then with regards to, again to the BCIR, those options predominantly are ileostomy, 
an ileoanal J-pouch, or a continent pouch, either a Coke or a Barnett. And it should be your job as the patient to decide what option you want to choose. With regards to follow-up after you leave us, uh, hopefully it's just going to be with uh, Sue's communications to you uh, with regards to how you're doing and I'm doing well. Um, what I do suggest though is, is that all of you stay connected with your gastroenterologist. The reason for that is the gastroenterologist is the guy or gal that will be able to temporize you should you have one of the problems, in particular should you have a difficulty getting your tube in. They will be able to scope your pouch and get a tube in for you. So I'm going to ask you know, three to six months out to, to have your GI doc, who may have never scoped a pouch before, scope your pouch so he sees what an easy scoping it is, and then that way if you have to call him, he's not going to be worried about getting a tube in for you. Uh, from a practical standpoint, we actually just uh, had a gentleman over from England getting some training with regards to the pouch and we're currently in talks communication with our current parent company that has Palm Capacity in a hospital to try to get a fellowship program going. I've also recently communicated with the colorectal surgeons at the University of South Florida which is in Tampa just north of us. Pregnancy definitely is an option after the BCIR. We do ask that you um, go to a high-risk OB doctor just in case you need a C-section. Uh, one of the tests that we're also going to request is an ultrasound because if you do need a C-section, we want to make sure that the bowel is behind the infant or the baby rather than in front of the baby. Uh, we've had over 100 women have uh, normal pregnancies, and a matter of fact, we have one lady that had a set of twins. The one disease that might preclude you from having a pouch created is Crohn's disease. We really don't totally understand all these diseases, but, but we do know that Crohn's can theoretically happen anywhere from mouth to anus. If you truly have been a patient that is just what we think is Crohn's colitis and you've had your colon out and had an ileostomy for some time, then you will potentially be a candidate for that. Even with that, we still feel that the potential risks are greater and we'll need to very much individualize you with regards to Crohn's. Patients who have a colostomy, which is different from an ileostomy, again, colostomy is, is your large intestine with a, an appliance on the outside, and an ileostomy is your small intestine. The job of the colon is to absorb water. So if you still have functioning colon doing the job it was originally built or made to do, we very infrequently would suggest having an appliance because that would require us to take out functioning bowel or functioning body parts and that's typically not something that we'd want to do. Depending upon your disease process will determine whether or not you actually have to lose what I call lose all of your bottom and with regards to that that would be your your sphincter muscles in the bottom. Patients with ulcerative colitis that can involve all of your colon really down to the anus. And so it is imperative that we take out all of that, that tissue. Uh, and so typically, if you're not a candidate for an ileoanal J-pouch or opt not to have that, we are going to remove all of the tissue, which includes your bottom. Uh, otherwise, you're, you're leaving some mucosa or inside lining of the intestines that may develop a cancer down the road. It's better than any other alternative that I know of. It's given me the freedom, I guess, to, to be myself and to live, to live my life the way I want it to. Those of you that, that are considering uh, BCIR, one of the things that I highly encourage you to do and actually will kind of make you do it 
that I want you to talk to other patients that have had a Barnett Cunt Intestinal Reservoir. And I actually tell you, I want you to talk to the patients that have had problems. Uh, because I know the 80% plus that don't really have problems are going to have just phenomenal quality of life from their BCIAR. And invariably, even the patients that have had problems are asking me if we are having to redeal with their pouch to do anything that you can, doc, to, to save my pouch. If you are considering the BCIR as an option, I first and foremost need to impress upon you that this is major surgery. You are committing three weeks in order to recover here at the hospital, and then an additional three to four weeks at home. I also would encourage you to talk to patients. Knowledge is power, and the patients are the best, best spokespeople for this procedure. We distribute a list. This list is patients who volunteer to be on the BCIR. A lot of them have had success stories, but some of them on that list are patients that have had complications. Again, this is major surgery. It provides freedom, control, confidence, but there are also some associated complications. When you speak to these patients, you need to ask them what their experience has been. Would they do it over again? How much pain have they had related to it? And what is a day with the BCIR like? In closing, I, again, I would like to stress to, to you all that it is imperative that you really look at your options. And hopefully today we, we, we've discussed with you what those options are and to make an informed decision on your part as to what option is best for you. Again, with regards to the BCIR, uh, again, you heard me say it earlier, but instead of your bagger bottom controlling you, you truly are in control. And that to me is what gives you that quality of life that you may be looking for. All I can say is for those that are contemplating some type of surgery like this, please read about it and talk to our surgeons because it's, it's one of the best type of surgeries that you could have for our, our situation. BCIR representatives at Palms of Pasadena Hospital are available to help you understand your options. Our BCIR team will review your medical records, answer your medical and insurance questions, and put you in touch with prior BCIR patients so you can make the most informed decisions possible. Call 800-494-7246 or visit bcir.com today to get started.